his team at uh, DMMC for arranging this program, inviting me and giving this opportunity to speak on uh, this uh, topic on orthoscopy. So I think we have some uh, freshers from, uh, how many of you are doing orthoscopy? Koi karta hai? Nahi. Achha, have, you, uh, have you witnessed some orthoscopic procedure going on? Okay. Have you scrubbed in some orthoscopic surgery? Yes, that's okay. Okay, that's good. So you will find this topic quite uh, interesting also. So we are going to see what is orthoscopy. Briefly, we are going to see the history of orthoscopy, how it started and how it's evolved over a period of time. And briefly, we'll also see the uh, different equipment which are essential for starting an orthoscopy. Okay. So initially, it all started in the Greeks, where the uh, uh, Greek word is the orthos means joint, and scope means we are going to look within the joint. Okay. So initially, the laparoscopic and the uh, uh, cystoscope were initially in Sur surgery started with that, and orthopedic surgeons in where tried to do the uh, joint examination through the cystoscope, but they were quite bulky, so it was not possible to see. So gradually, over a period of time, so this is Professor Kenji Takai, who was the first person who described uh, examination of a knee joint. So at that time, the instruments were that much uh, were not that uh, refined. So he was just uh, these are the specific instrument which were uh, he was using. And if you can see, most of the design which is there, it is still persistent. Refinements has been done in the optical system and the camera system, but the equipment design is almost similar. So he was the first person who started the uh, orthoscopy, and one of his uh, uh, student, uh, Professor Won Masaki, he started, he, uh, he continued with the uh, different designs of the orthoscopic surgery. And he designed the 21st orthoscope in around 1967, where his uh, actual the diagnostic orthoscopy started. So initially, when you used to start, he has described these uh, different phases of orthoscopic uh, uh, surgeries. So during the 1920 and 59, designs were there, but the orthoscopy and the uh, visual system were not that uh, accurate. 1960 and 69, with the invent of the orthoscope proper designing, the number of surgeries increase. So initially there were camera systems which are not available. So you need to have direct vision. So there was a chance for contamination also. And the assistant which was there is not able to uh, uh, see what the surgeon is saying. Then with the development in the 1967, he described the 21st, ortho, uh, 21st number orthoscope. So it was the first commercially available orthoscope which we, they started doing the surgery. And four stage started after 1979, where uh, the advancement in the system of video camera, light source, and all these things will lead to increase in the number of indication as well as the other joints were also explored uh, for the diagnostic orthoscopy. So these were the initial days. Then we started the 21st orthoscope. Then these are the initial uh, the uh, development of the different uh, lens system. Then these were the initial cameras which were used. Okay, you can see how bulky it is. Now this is the current model setup which is there at every place. And now we are moving on to the wireless system. So where there is no light source is attached, the light source, camera, everything is inbuilt and the image is transferred to a wireless system. So we are moving towards that now. So coming uh, back to the basic orthoscopy trolley which everyone should have, there should be, one should have an orthoscope, a light source and cable, camera system, monitor, orthoscopic instrument, motorized shaver, radio frequency cautery, fluid management system, and a tourniquet. Okay, so one by one, we'll go into detail of everyone. So orthoscope, it is the basic uh, instrument which is used to see within the joint. Most commonly used orthoscope is the 4 mm, 4 mm 30 degree orthoscope. So what do you mean by 30 degree is that? It means the, or to the, there is an angle of inclination of the lens at the end of the scope. So it is looking 30 degree down. So whenever you are seeing through the scope, you are seeing 30 degree down. So you are not seeing straight away. If you are using a zero degree scope, then you are looking forward. So to have a better vision, we start, uh, the uh, orthoscopes are designed such that you can see 30 degree down. And there are other orthoscopes are also available like 70 degree and 90 degree. Usually the length is between 8 centimeter to 15 centimeter. So for the knee, you have a long, uh, larger or the 4 mm 30 degree with the 150 centimeter length. For 
ankle, you will have a shorter orthoscope, ankle or a wrist. Then with this, uh, if the scope is smaller, the field of vision will be smaller. If the scope is larger, that is the 4 mm, the field of vision would be more. Also, with the help of a 30 degree orthoscope, you have a, around a field up around 115 degree. The advantage with the 130 orthoscope is that if you rotate it, you will have a better vision and there is no blind spot. Whereas with the help of a 70 degree orthoscope, you have a wider view, but there is a blind spot. If you can see here, there is a blind spot. So anything in this particular region will be missed. So there are specific indications for using a 70 degree orthoscope, but most commonly almost 90% of the time or the 99% of the time will be using a 4 mm 30 degree orthoscope. And the, the indications where the 70 degree uh, orthoscope can be handy if you are going for a PCR reconstruction, if you are removing some loose bodies, you, if you want to look down without taking the posterior middle portal. So in that case, this particular orthoscope is useful. Also, if you are trying to do a subscapularis repair, then this particular orthoscope is useful. Then orthoscopic sheath, there are various type of sheaths which are available, but you should go for a high flow sheath. High flow sheet, if you have a high flow sheet, the joint distension would be better. You will be able to uh, better visualize the joint and there won't be any use for uh, need for a orthoscopy pump, mostly for the knee or the shoulder orthoscopy, if you are using a high flow sheet. If the fluid is not coming, the distension is not proper, then the visualization is going to be poor. Then light source, so initially a light, uh, normal filament light were used uh, for illumination. So there were the instances where the patient used to get shocked during the surgery. But now with the refinement of the halogen light, then the halogen light was uh, heat creating, then there was xenon light. Now we have the LED lights, which are uh, cold light, more whiter, and which will give a better vision. You need to specifically take care of the, uh, ortho the light source cable. You should not uh, bend it acutely, because there are chances that it may result into damage to the filament, resulting into decreased illumination. Camera system, yes, it is essential. And for the beginners, I would suggest that go for a good camera system and good uh, uh, orthoscope. You should not compromise on the camera system because if the vision is not good, the ultimate result is not going to be good. And many times it happens that we start with a, a substandard instrument and then it becomes very difficult to uh, learn new things as well as do whatever you are doing perfectly. So if your vision is good, you will be able to execute the surgery in a better way. So we have now the HD and the 4K system. Even an HD system is okay, but it should be complemented with a uh, good uh, uh, high definition monitor. Orientation of the camera, how to orient the camera, that we are going to see into the uh, cadaveric session. Because if you are inserting a joint, you should align your camera in a such a way that you are seeing, uh, you should be uh, visualizing the joint as it is. So you should be at the level of the joint. You should not be, if the camera is bad, then you have to see it like this. So there are multiple, this vision will change depending upon the how you are positioning your camera and the light source. So different permutation and combination are possible if you try to move the camera as well as the uh, light source. So what you can do, you can fix the camera, keep it parallel to the joint line, and then you can move the light source. So if you move the right source, you will be able to see the different part of the knee joint without much moving the uh, uh, multiple movements. So this trick will come with a practice, but initially try to do the fix your camera at one particular place, move your scope to visualize the different, different, different directions. Then video recording system is good. Maybe uh, initially you can go for a uh, cost effective uh, equipment but later on you can move on to the uh, advanced uh, recording system which is good for uh, making the videos also for giving the uh, giving to the patient because many a time the insurance companies will ask for the videos then probe orthoscopy probe it is called uh, the extension of the uh, orthoscopist finger because it is used to palpate the different structures which are there within the joint you can use it to retract uh, your, uh, retract your uh, structure if they are coming in your way. It is able to move the, uh, if there's a loose body, you can move it with the help of a scope. Also, the size of the scope is, uh, the uh, hook probe is fixed. So you can also calculate if there is any articular defect is there. You can calculate with the help of the curve end of the uh, probe. So there are different uses of the 
proved. The triangulation techniques, yes, we are going to have a different uh, lecture on this, where you are able to, triangulation means you are, the scope is in one hand and the pro instrument in the other hand, and you have to bring it into the vision of the camera, and you should be able to execute the different maneuvers. Motorized shaving system, this is also one of the essential uh, component. So there are different type of blades and burrs which are available. So mostly whenever you are using it, you use it in an oscillating mode with a suction on the mid, mid portion. If you are sucking more, then it will result into all the uh, loss of fluid joint distension and loss of, uh, the vision will be compromised. Orthoscopic scissors, they are available in the market, but most of the time they are not recommended because there have been instances where they are resulting into uh, breakage of the instrument. So they are no more recommended now. But case, basket force, yes, these are also one of the essential uh, instruments we should, we should have, mainly used for uh, removing the uh, meniscus, damaged meniscus. Also, if the remnant of ACL is there, it can be used to remove that. And always uh, uh, don't forget to give a lavage because whatever the particles which are which you cut with the help of basket force it will be dropped into the joint so always use a shaver after that to suck out the whatever the fragments if they are lying into the joint grasping forces these are also one of the essential thing to remove the loose bodies or the part part of the meniscus you grab the meniscus also it is useful in the uh, shoulder surgeries then cautery system we have the RF system and the cautery systems also. So this Arthrex has a very good uh, cool cut uh, cool cut cartery. So it is uh, basically they say it's a uh, single use, but you can use it for multiple surgery, and it's very useful when you are, you are doing a bank card repair, even for a ACL surgery. So no need to go for a RF, which are very costly, and even the wands you cannot use for multiple times. But this cautery is good. They are available with the other companies also, so they are also cheap and it is able to achieve a hemostasis whenever it's required. Irrigation system is important to have a proper joint distension, but with the invent of the high flow system, there is a very uh, minimal need, hardly anyone using a uh, pump for knee orthoscopic procedure. Even for the bank card repair, many of us uh, are not using the pump system, but maybe for the uh, rotator cuff, you can use it. So another trick in this that uh, you can use your TUR set and attach a BP cuff to that. And you can uh, put it directly into your three liter saline. So with which you can able, you will be able to create a increased uh, pressure within the, and incre improve the joint distension. Especially it, uh, it is very useful whenever the knees flex, if you're doing a transportal femoral tunnel, you need a joint distension. In that time, this may be handing. And also increasing the height of the uh, uh, saline system will also improve the distension of the joint. So these are the basic instruments which are essential for starting any diagnostic knee orthoscopy procedure. But depending upon the, uh, the, uh, the diagnostic orthoscopy is also termed very misleading. As such, there is no diagnostic orthoscopy. Most of the time we will be doing some or doing some, performing some kind of surgery, either synectomy, either meniscectomy or ACL, whatever it is. So it will be, you will need to have some other uh, instrument also, surgery specific instrument. So if you're going for ACL, you will have to have an ACL set, then meniscus repair cannula, and the shoulder surgery specific instrument will be required. Most of the time the implant person would be providing it, but it is a better idea if you have your own instruments. So proper positioning of this implant is also essential. The uh, screen should be easily visible the usually the preferred uh, location of the uh, irrigation should be on the same side of the patient. You can keep it in the axilla. All these instruments are very delicate. So we need to have uh, take proper care of this instrument, otherwise it may result into a uh, lot of damage to the instrument. I know of a person who has damaged, uh, who got damages orthoscope four times in a single year. So we can imagine the cost which is involved into that. So taking care of your instruments is very important. So uh, there should be some dedicated person who will be taking care of their hand instrument as well as the optical instrument. Various enzymatic and ultrasonic cleaners which are available. The enzymatic cleaning solution are easily available. You can use it and uh, that will be very useful for preventing the infection. As such, in rate of infection in cases of uh, orthoscopic surgery is very less, but yes, they have been reported and uh, the persons who are uh, practicing uh, 
multiple surgeries in a day, they must have experienced uh, high incidence of uh, infection. So you should take all precautions to avoid infection and the cleaning of the solution, uh, proper interval, proper cleaning of the instrument between the two surgeries is also important. The preferred technique for, uh, for the metal instrument, you can send it for autoclave. Even the camera head and the uh, orthoscope are autoclavable, but I don't think uh, any of us are going sending the cameras for autoclaving. So most prefer take, uh, you, if you have a facility for ETO or plasma, you can use it. If you are doing the multiple surgeries in a single day, then you can soak the instrument in the SIDEC solution. But that solution, SIDEC solution should be freshly prepared. Otherwise, there is always a chance for contamination. Even the Jagtab sir has taken the initiative with the help of the Orthoscopy uh, Association of Nagpur, uh, Orthoscopy Society of Nagpur, that the society has brought a ETO machine at one center, and the, all the members of the ASN can take this benefit and keep their, uh, uh, send their instrument for ETO sterilization. So it has helped immensely in the many surgeons. So take home messages. You should know the essential equipment which is required for the orthoscopy procedure. By good quality equipment, you have a clear vision during the surgery. It also makes your life easy during the learning phase. And orthoscopic instruments are delicate and costly. Take care of instruments for a longer lifespan. Thank you.